Hello, dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And I'd like to talk a little more about the um, professions of psychology and psychiatry. In the context of the astral stories that are circulating through the newosphere during the ascension process. First, it's important to understand that all souls on earth are clearing through the ascension process right now and through the incoming light and through their own willingness to proceed with this ascension. Uh, the first uh, step in the ascension process is to reach that understanding that has been known in ages past as enlightenment, awakening, illumination, or satori. And from there, because of the change in the photonic light in 2012, we are able to proceed much farther in our awareness and understanding of all that is. But the very first step for those that wish to take it is enlightenment. Now, I've been reading um, Arthur E. Powell's compilation of a book called The Astral Body. For a long time now I've been paying attention to that book because it offers an understanding to Western society of the life of the astral body both while we're in physical form and while we're on the astral plane after death. And, and this is a, an understanding that is really pretty much missing from Western culture. Uh, it's been present in, in, in the Eastern religions for a long time now. They've understood about it. But uh, the religions of the West, uh, especially the Christian religions of the West, uh, could use some filling in on points like this that would help people as they pass from form into the astral plane. It would help them adapt um, to the astral plane. And one of the things I learned from Arthur Powell's compilation uh, had to do with the desire elemental. And, and I took this tool that I, that I learned from from that book and I've been applying it for a long time to my own life. It has to do with training the, the uh, desire elemental to, to behave in a way that allows the soul to evolve. And um, so, so one of the things that stands in the way of that soul evolution is the tendency of the desire elemental to connect to the unconscious thought cloud of the world and to the feral instincts of humankind, right? And one of those feral instincts that, that many people find troublesome is the, is the sexual drive, the sexual urge. And when I say that, I don't mean in a very polite, you know, confined social context such as the marriage between a man and a woman. I mean the ongoing urge, deeply repressed in modern culture, to, uh, to, to wish to act out sexual relationships with just about everybody. Some, some people just about everybody of the opposite sex, some people just about everybody of the same sex, and some people just about everybody, you know? It all depends. So, um, one of the first things that I did is to begin to teach my desire elemental to, to hold off on the constant uh, subconscious interplay of, of sexual back and forth and the feral, the feral instincts, and to hold off and to listen to me and to listen to my own heart until I'm ready to allow it to express itself in that way. And I do my best to encourage it to, to let it know how much I love it and to let it know that it will have an opportunity to express itself at the right time and so forth. I like, to, I like my Desire Elemental to be very happy and, and joyful. And in general, I think I've done a pretty good job with it. 
Um, there was a time years ago, in the many years ago, during the process of training my Desire Elemental, when I would be very, uh, because my astral matter was becoming more refined, I would be very uh, uh, at odds with the um, very deep, feral quality of the unconscious thought cloud of the world uh, with, when it expressed itself sexually. And I could hear, I could clear hear all the time at certain times, especially on Friday nights and Saturday nights when the bars were open at that time, I could hear this this constant, like, because uh, hard drugs will unleash the untrained desire elemental in people who frequent bars and so forth. And so I could, I could hear this, this deep undercurrent of like a restless, uh, feral, sexual desire all over the city I was living in and all over the world. And, and at times, if my aura was not like perfectly tuned and my electromagnetic field was not the very strongest, uh, during those intervals, during those time frames, I would feel uh, like an anger or an upset about what was going on and how I couldn't rise above it. Sometimes it would drag me to a lower or coarser astral matter plane. And so at those times, once or twice, maybe a few more times, there would be uh, maybe, maybe uh, a few weeks on the weekends it would happen that I would be really upset and I would feel that I was at the effect of what was going on. Interestingly enough, this is happening to the new flocks of ascension uh, souls that are coming up right now. They're feeling though that, I remember I used to feel that other people, specifically other people, that I didn't even know were responsible for all that. I later found that it was completely untrue, you know, that it was not these people, but rather the unnamed, anonymous feeling of so many people who were on hard drugs and who were living in my city especially, or in other cities that I had visited. It was not that one person that I had singled out at all. In fact, that one person so many years ago thought that it was me. He had a similar experience and he thought that it was me. We were both mistaken. And the funny thing is that right now these, these new flocks of ascension souls are going through the same process. And in the case of, in my case, I'm being, I'm being pinpointed as the source of all their troubles, you know? And so, uh, so I have, uh, and, and of course, that's a mistake. It's an honest mistake that we make. And I think it has to do with um, the quality of the mind that projects our issues onto other people. I think it's called projection. It's like a, a, a natural tendency of the mind to do that. And so, and also we have a tendency to, to oversimplify uh, like a, a global phenomenon uh, that we sense, a phenomenon that we sense, and to simplify it into a blaming process or a, a scapegoating process where we name or label one person as the cause of our trouble. Where, in fact, there's no basis for that, you know. Actually, no basis whatsoever. A more mature point of view would be to say, I am experiencing a certain emotion. I'm doing my best to control my desire elemental, but sometimes things get a little out of hand. You know, that would be one way to look at it that would allow me to take on my own creative role in solving the problem. But it, we're not always able to do that. You know, sometimes we fall into childhood like patterns of behavior that, that you know, mom comes along and the two kids are having a fight, right? The two siblings are having a, a, an argument, little kids, right, toddlers. One says, she did it. One says, 
he did it like that. Mom says, no, no, she did it. <laughs> and mom says, okay, you two, calm down now and play nicely together. <laughs> so it's like that, you know, but only we, we don't have the mom. We have to be the mom that does that for ourselves. Huh. So I'd like to just issue a word of encouragement right now for those souls that are facing that, uh, that feeling that, I had long ago that I was at the effect of the unconscious thought cloud of the world, that other people were doing things to me and so on. Uh, in time, I can promise you, this feeling will go away and you will become, slowly but surely, more the master of your perfected electromagnetic field. It's, it, will, it is something that will happen for you. Now, I've talked a little about the scapegoating and the projection uh, that are unconscious, like uh, uh, processes that, are, that will occur quite frequently. And you, can, you yourself can pinpoint these from time to time as people um, project their own emotions onto you or their, um, their childhood traumas or traumas from many lifetimes past. Or they may uh, blame you for, for things that are actually going on to perfect their own electric, electromagnetic field through grace right, and the incoming light. So you may be subject to projection or to scapegoating or to blame. And such has been the case for me too in the last few years. Um, there, was, uh, there was a group one of the many groups that I that I know, who um, had within it this this mental filter of psychol, let's call it psychol, psychi, psychi psychol, <laughs> the current notion of that, and uh, they began to experience this 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 fluctuating, very strong drive of the feral sexual instincts, and they. And they began to, because I was an outsider to the group, they began to, first of all, made the assumption that I was the source of this. Um, the feeling that they had in their own sexual organs, I was the source of this. And also, that the reason I was the source of this was that I was, and then they used uh, any number of psychological la labels to explain that. <laughs> I had this, I was damaged. They were okay, they were being attacked by me. Okay, I was like the scapegoat in this process. And so this went on for years, actually, that, that they, uh, not only did they blame me, uh, but they, they came up with the notion that the way to make sure that the process stopped, the process of their own soul clearing stopped, was to attack me in shifts 24-7 with a sexual with with this sexual feeling now the truth of the matter is they couldn't get rid of it quite yet and another truth is they were going to get rid of it eventually okay but the mental filter that 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 they used was that they could they could get rid of their own feelings by attacking me with their feelings okay and uh, at first I would uh, react to that um, with a feeling of of upset you know of and until finally I overcame like the whole the feeling of the whole group eventually through grace and through God I would be upset about it. And so what they would hear from me, you know, from my desire elemental was when they tried this, this astral, what, what is termed astral rape, when they tried this technique 24-7, segaying off from one member to the next, uh, they would hear from me, oh no, oh no, oh no, sadness, right, that this was happening. Um, and from that, the, the, the people in the group who were psychi, psychal, mental filter oriented, uh, deduced that I must have been so wounded, you know, with the label, that in my childhood, uh, that uh, I would be better off being uh, in a, a female-female relationship as a, as a homosexual. 
right? And so then what they did was they switched the plan, you know, amongst the group, and they started, um, uh, the women in the group started the same sexual rape series again, the intention being to acclimate me to the notion that I was not a heterosexual female, but a, a homosexual female, in essence, deep down, buried, repressed, right? And this, from this also, they got the oh no, oh no, because my whole intention here uh, for all these many years has been to train my desire elemental to behave in a way that will allow me to more quickly go through the soul evolution process. And part of that is for me, as a person seeking enlightenment, part of that is not necessarily to fit the social norm of mental health. The social norm presupposes that we will be in a relationship with another person or persons in a sexual way. Okay, But the spiritual goal is not like that at all. The spiritual goal is that we will perfect our energy field in relation to God by aligning with God, God's will and heart and mind that we will uh, we will align our small will our our little love our small hearts and our small minds with the vast and wonderful will and heart and mind of God that is our first like alignment our first bonding so for me as a person seeking enlightenment, the notion of uh, psychi, psychol, mental health, mental filter, of, of needing to relate constantly with the unconscious, feral, sexual instincts of the world, the, the notion that this is mental health is just very far from my notion of what health is. My emphasis is on spiritual health. And so, in college, I rose beyond the, uh, the psychi psychal mental filter. I realized its limitations, and since then I have sought out the greater, the vaster um, horizons of spiritual evolution. That's how it is for me. I'm going to continue with this saga of the astral stories. So over the course of about three years, the astral stories that had to do with the group that I was the out-group out person for first fell into the line of inability amongst the group members to control the feral sexual urge, blame uh, of another person, kind of a um, haphazard blame of another person, me in this instance for that feeling that they had of sexuality and attempting to 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 like stuff me into a box it's like a, a what do they call it a jack in the box you know where you stuff the puppet back into the box here's the puppet it jumps out it goes my, what a wonderful, beautiful world, you know. God is everywhere and like that. And then this, the hand of, the, of this particular mental filter comes back in and tries to stuff the little guy back into the box, it seems like, and, and says, no, you have to be in relationship. You have to have a psychic bonding with, um, with a uh, person of the opposite sex. And if that won't do because you, we label you this and such, then you have to be in a psychic, really, you have to be in a psychic courting relationship with a person of the same sex and that's just gonna have to do for you because you're wounded. <laughs> Sometimes I would get very aggravated about it. And in fact, I, I did a video prior to this one. This is rare. Usually I just do a video. But I did a video prior to this one and I got to thinking, you know, I sound pretty up tired in that video. I better just wait till I sat for quite a while and communed with Mother Nature before I actually come up with a video. And this is the result. <laughs> so now this morning, 
Uh, last night, there was a, a, around 4 o'clock, from 4 to 5 o'clock in the morning last night, there was an incredible uh, healing event that took place, uh, at least in as far as everything I know is concerned. And a mental filter lifted for me that had to do with being put back in the box, you know. I had been dealing with this notion for a long time that I, my body cells don't want to be boxed in. They want to be unfolding out into the new realities of the greater DNA, right? And so they have been coming up with this story about they hear the, um, the astral stories and they realize that that society, a uh, social consensus, would like us to be in that little box for sure you know and they're going no no I want to be free like that and so they feel a certain amount of uh, uh, foreboding really about about the astral stories which, which are all about being contained in time and space in a particular time frame right and not being free to create whatever time frame we want you know and every time there's an attempt to stick me into a particular geographic location my body cells re rebel you know they don't want to be there they want to be everywhere <laughs> at the same time you know by locating and try locating any old place they please and the interesting thing is this is now possible this is now possible for every human being. And so if you get into that kind of situation where you hear astral stories that seem to be putting you back in the box, just know that it's no longer possible. It can't be done, you know. We can't be stuck in, in something like the psychi, psych, how did I say, in that little box. We can't be there. We are much greater and much higher than that, you know, no matter what the astral stories might say. And the trepidation that we might feel, even the very slight trepidation, the undercurrent that we feel has to do with uh, thinking that we might be forced to be less than we truly are now. <laughs> kind of interesting, huh? The minute I realized that, I went, oh, Oh wow, you know, obviously I can do these things. That's what this, these little sniggling stories were about, these astral stories. It had to do with not wanting to go back to some limited notion of reality. And uh, the astral stories did have to do, I found out yesterday, uh, with some other people that were somehow oppositely inclined, like energetically from me, that absolutely were in favor of these boxes. And this morning it all came to like a conclusion because a number of people glommed together and, and it, the, the feeling that I got was that they were trying to say that I was going to be imprisoned in some kind of little box forever. And so I just sat and meditated between four and five and what do you know, the time went by and nothing happened and I'm still just as free as ever I was. And so we shouldn't pay that much attention to astral stories, I feel. They're just the expression of the unconscious thought cloud of the world that is now clearing. That's how I feel about that. We should not blame anybody else for these astral stories either because we can turn our attention to the clearing of our own electromagnetic field. <laughs> this is going to be a long uh, video, I can tell. <laughs> I have some thoughts on one story about uh, someone who assumed a psychological role in the, of course there, were, there have been many, just many psych psychological role players uh, and psychiatric role players that, that sort of loop in and out of my own astral consciousness over the years. So this is just one of those. Uh, that person, as I understand from the astral stories, uh, in their young girlhood, I guess, um, who were just pointing to their mother uh, as far as the, um, the, the role that they were assuming in a, in a social context with regard to sexuality. The mother apparently felt that they were being too free. And so, once you know, the 
the ch the child that then later assumed the psychological role was labeled through I guess psychology or psychiatry as being a nymphoid personality. I don't really know what a nymphoid personality is, but assuming that uh, it's th that category that's called uh, nymphomania in uh, Wikipedia, then that would be considered by social standards to be a too much ex acting out of sexuality. Right. So, so this young girl was labeled essentially by her mother as a person that acted out too much sexuality. I can only imagine how upset her desire elemental would be about that in a repressed and unconscious context. So long come I, <laughs> when all the astral chatter is going along. And, and because of my uh, spiritual goals, like her mother, I am also not in favor of acting out uh, sexuality in a manner I consider excessive. In fact, I'm celibate. <laughs> That's even worse. <laughs> so my desire elemental is being trained in a way that is the opposite of the assumptions of her desire elemental. Okay. So she is placing herself in the role of psychological counselor, like eighth, eighth chakra bow tie, right? For these many years, off and on, comes into my astral stories. And she is saying, uh, she's the one, apparently, that set up the group, uh, like back and forth about uh, raping me, the men raping me and then the women raping me astrally and then, uh, you know, that I should go into, a, a, it was just a, a long involved, a very a malformed notion about that. And, and I can see the deep, like, unconscious uh, feelings of, um, of getting back at the mother, you know, and of forcing the mother into the role of the desire elemental that she was associating with, the more actively sexual desire elemental. Um, I can understand that, and I've explained it today, and I think that she's in a position now to understand all that and to train her own desire elemental in any way that she wants, or at least to acknowledge that it's all right the way it is, any which way she wants to do it. And that in accepting all that, she can start to overcome that, that upset that she may have had over that labeling process, that psychological labeling process in her formative years. So from that, what I would deduce is that when we hear labeling by the psychological and psychiatric uh, um, professions, and it's applied to us, that, that there's no need to be concerned about it, because these groups of people are merely striving, like us, to overcome their own soul wounding and to step into the greater light. They're striving to overcome the mental filter of their profession and step into a greater uh, coherence of, of, of heart energy that, that lets go all the mental tangles, you know. They're not a threat. They're not a threat to us, even if they project on us their own, like, soul wounding, even if they use us as scapegoats. We ourselves are, are the only, um, only consciousness that changes our own soul wounding, and we do that through aligning with God, right? We don't need to, to blame them back again. We don't need to project our anger onto them just because they're projecting it possibly onto us, you know. We don't need to do any of that. We just need to sit, <sighs> revel in the grace and incoming light and let it be. <laughs> Easier said than done, right? <laughs> so here's the final little bit, and that has to do with the ongoing studying I've been doing of what seems to be in, in the astral context uh, uh, astral stories regarding uh, 
nymphomania, satyriasis, and uh, serial killing, and mass murders, stuff like that, like what Wikipedia calls the um, antisocial person personality. Um, According to Wikipedia, nymphomania and satyriasis are sub-like ramifications of antisocial personality. And antisocial personality can manifest in a lot of different ways. A lot of different, uh, like, antisocial, they say, professions such as drug dealing and, and being a sex worker or uh, these these other like sexual outlets that are frowned upon by society and so forth and i just today started thinking of these of these mental filters in a less like hopeless manner than before i wonder and i'd like to leave you with this thought if they might have to do again with training the desire elemental uh, in the case of In the case of uh, what's termed or labeled nymphomania, for instance, uh, the desire elemental might say to itself, it might, it might learn from, like us, our own hearts, it might learn, uh, uh, having sexual relationships, this is just an example, with lots of different kinds of people, uh, and as often as I want to, is the socially mature way of behaving. I am I am perfectly healthy, uh, mentally healthy, because I'm unrepressed in my expression of sexuality. So that might be the training that that person's desire elemental has received. And uh, if the person d determines to undertake spiritual evolution, they may wish to modify that programming somewhat. So. Uh, I similarly for the serial killer uh, who uh, you see the instinct to survive is another one of the um, uh, features that is overseen by the desire elemental and uh, most recently this the serial killing like astral stories on the internet especially in the large cities have had to do with uh, uh, like sadistic desire, the desire to kill and be sexually satisfied. And I think that, let's see, how do those stories go on the subconscious level? Let me think. Oh, right. Something like this is an example. My life has no quality. Uh, the only thing I live for is a chance to... Uh, to gratify my urge to kill while having sex. I like that. And that might be like the true actual thing that's going on or it might just be that the person is having like violent fantasies while having um, normal sexual relations in the eyes of the world. <laughs> uh, so so the problem being that those kinds of s trainings for the desire elemental can eventually lead to acting out in terms of rape and sexual murder and so forth. So, so from a psychological, psychiatric point of view, this uh, like uh, mental filter might be considered hopeless, right? But from the point of view of training the desire elemental, it could be a very simple process if the free will of the person involved is into it, you know, a relatively simple process. So uh, I would like to leave you with those hopeful thoughts with regard to all kinds of diagnoses that put people in boxes with no chance of, or hope of getting out and uh, how at variance these are with the incoming light, the beautiful stream of photonic light, and the limitless possibilities of our future as humankind on Earth. And also for those people in uh, psychology and psychiatry who are arising right now, and all of the other professions that 
that that had previously um, shown authority over other humans, such as uh, law enforcement, the judicial branch of the government, the legislative branch of the government, of people of great wealth and so forth. Uh, it's daunting, I'll bet, uh, to be facing, clearing our own soul wounding if we have the notion that other people look up to us and are expecting us to have all the answers or look up to us as symbols of power and authority and justice and so all the different things. And, and we have to go through this healing too, just like everybody else. As a very, one of the Ascension people used to say, souls arise one by one. That was Daniela Breen. She used to say, souls arise one by one. So, we're not arising, uh, in other words, those that are overseeing groups and those that, are, uh, that are, are used to providing counsel aren't, aren't pulling other souls up with them. No, it's not like that. Each soul in alignment with the divine arises, right? And so, we can offer ourselves, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking at the editorial we we can those we could offer ourselves an opportunity to step out of the healing role and or step out of the uh, like overseeing uh, the community role and and step into the role of our own uh, our own personal transformation 